Okay, so to get our cover done, I purchased a heavy duty four inch, four inch binder. And in order to determine what uh, size binder you need, you just want to take all of your pages, lay them down, okay? And then you wanna measure this, this stack here. So mine came to about three and Mine came to three and a half. So I added a half an inch and I've got a four inch binder, okay? All right, so this is trash, we don't need that. And we don't fill it, that's okay. That's gonna get removed anyway. Okay, so what else you need? What else do you need? <laughs> So you need a piece of Tyvek, and I just got this from Amazon, I think. It's been a few years. It's possible I got it from Staples. But this is the Tyvek that I use. A whole glorious pile of Tyvek envelopes that it will take me a decade to go through. <laughs> um, so you just need one of those. Yep, you just need one of those, okay? And we won't even use the whole thing, so. Okay, and then you need, you definitely, you definitely need one quarter inch score tape. <clears throat> and I am also grabbing my half inch and a bigger size, two inches or bigger. You need your glue. I have my corner uh, mitering tool. If you don't have that, it's okay. Craft knife or box cutter. Of course you need your ruler and then, you know, you're gonna need a paper cutter, of course. Um, I think that's probably it. You'll need base card stock, like whatever you would typically use to wrap your albums. Um, and then of course, decorative paper. I haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> okay. So we are gonna start by showing you how to do this. So this is kind of a complicated long, well, I don't know if I would say complicated, but it's definitely a long process. So what we need to do is we need to remove all of the plastic from these pieces of chipboard underneath this binder, okay? So I'll start with the plastic and I'm just gonna remove every piece of, you know, remove it all. And underneath the plastic, there's this I don't, well, more plastic. I don't know if it's plastic, if it's vinyl, I'm not completely sure. I'm gonna get under there as best I can without going through the chipboard. Right here, you can see how this end, this pocket is attached all the way through. So I'm gonna try to cut it off here. And then I might be able to pull it down. Might. I've done this before, I know it's possible. Although it is going to be, these screws or whatever they are, are gonna hold it down in place. So you just kinda have to get it out as best you can. Okay, so that came through, because that's not attached to anything. There, so I just tore it so it came out from the screw. Okay. 
Sorry, I'm gonna shake my table because I had to move my camera in order to get a better view. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay, so here is where the screws are. So we're just gonna rip it. The screws aren't gonna go anywhere. But we do want the cover to go somewhere. So there we go. gently cutting through this so as not to go through my chipboard, okay? is going to be the hardest part it's getting the plastic out from underneath the binders or the rings sorry that is definitely going to be the hardest part the easiest part. <laughs> and I know that you can, oh, uh, let's see here. Since there's only two screws, you know, this since there's only two screws, in the center is not attached so if we can get that out somehow It's not really possible to get everything out from under the screws, but that's okay. As long as it stays under there, you know, like that, I've got a little piece sticking out. That might, that might be a problem. It might not. I'm trying to be, I don't want to, I don't want to pull this too far away from the chipboard. I'm trying to trying to be as gentle as I can and not cause, <clears throat> not pull too much. But I don't want, see how I've got pieces here that bunched up underneath? I don't want that. Okay, that's perfect. So all I really can see under there is nothing is sticking out. Nothing's gonna come out and poke out later. There's like a little piece here that might wanna, might wanna show itself later. Let's see. Let's see, see that piece that's sticking out right there? That might wanna cause problems later. So I'll just see if I can 
Oh, look at that, beautiful. Okay, there we go. Well, that's probably not a big deal at all. I'll just pull it anyway. There we go. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. That was the hardest part. For sure, that was the hardest part. Okay, that is done. And so over here, this the corners are rounded. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if I want that. So I think, well, I'm gonna leave it, it's fine. I don't want to chop off so much of my book that I don't have extra space there for the pages, so I'm gonna leave that. Okay, now, oopsie. Okay, now for this one. So you're doing the same thing, okay? Okay, so there is our three ring binder. Okay, so next step. This measures, I believe, 11 and a half, 11 and a quarter. Okay, so this this measures about 11 and 3 eighths of an inch. So, uh, but it's not quite a perfect measurement. About 11 and 3 eighths minus a 16th of an inch. So I am going to cut a piece of Tyvek that measures the perfect length of this, exactly the length of this. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll go about nine inches just to be safe. There's no right or wrong. You can know you could go the entire 12 inches if you wanted. Um, I'll go 10 inches, okay? So 10 inches by the length of this binder, okay? Okay, so here's my Tyvek. Need to trim off a smidge. length okay so what we're gonna do I am going to apply full coverage score tape to this so this is where a larger size tape would come in handy I'm gonna set my binder pieces off to the side I gotta throw all this away 
All right, so I'm going to very carefully lay full coverage to my tie back, and mine is two inches wide. Okay, so, and this is 10. So since 10 is easily divisible by two, I'm going to lay my score tape so that I don't have to cut it. All right, so we're gonna do this super carefully so we get full coverage. I'm not gonna let it stick until it is exactly lined up with the edge. And try not to cut into your tie back <laughs> like I just did a tiny bit. Okay, just a tiny bit I cut into it. All right. So yeah, that just worked out perfectly that I cut my tie back to uh, 10 inches. So you definitely don't want to cut it too small. You, uh, you know, you want it to, if this is, well, this is our binder, <laughs> but take your binder and you definitely want it to be a good length. I, I would prefer mine to overlap by at least two inches. And then you want a little bit of a gap between the two so I would say mine should be at least eight, but if you, or maybe at least nine. Um, and since my tie back is two inches, I just went up to 10. If you have three inch tie back, nine would be perfect. If you have full coverage tie back, like a sheet eight and a half by 11, then it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so that worked out perfectly. Uh, although I am overlapped by a tiny little bit my tape is overlapped slightly, so I'll have to go ahead and cut that. All right, so let's burnish this really well. And I'm just going to make sure that my tape does not extend past the edge. The edges. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to take my spine piece and I'm just gonna center that. I'm just gonna eyeball it. All right, uh, let's get, oops, wrong side. <laughs> one on so I can grab it without ruining anything or, yeah without okay all right so the halfway point is about five inches and there's my half there's my approximate halfway point there
then I'm going to take the one that doesn't have the rings on it. I'm gonna do that one next, but first, this is where my quarter inch score tape comes in handy. I wanna leave a one quarter inch gap. But I don't want, I don't wanna eyeball that, so. I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape. Hopefully I don't get my head in the way. Okay, so that will be my, my guide. And on this side as well. Take the section that doesn't have the rings, make sure I've got the right orientation, and I'm going to line that up directly against that quarter inch score tape, okay? Making sure, I'm going to have to pull it out of frame here just for a second. Okay, so it is directly lined up against that quarter inch score tape and it is in line with the spine, okay? And I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna remove this. And I'm gonna do this piece, okay? Same thing. I'm just gonna move it out of frame for a minute so I can see directly above it. Okay, so there we go. I've lined it up directly against that quarter inch score tape and it is in line with this edge and with this edge. All right. did was I took one of my 12 by 12 um, solid cardstock pieces and I cut them into one and a half inch strips. Okay, so first thing I am going to do is I am going, I'm going to put, oh yeah, maybe I should have done two inch strips because my, I'm going to, uh, I hate to waste paper, but my thick, as you, as you already know, my thickest double-sided score tape is two inches, so it'd be easier if I cut two inch strips. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yep, yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, so I've got two inch strips and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my I'm going to apply full coverage double-sided tape to all of those. So I'm just gonna I'll show you what I'm doing and then I will do all of them. 
off camera. Okay, burnish that down real well. So I would go no smaller than one and a half, okay? No smaller than one and a half. So if you, you know, or like if you're saying to yourself, well, I only have a half inch score tape, so I'll cut mine two and a half an inch. No, no, that's not good. You need at least, I would say one and a half, because we're gonna be taking these pieces and we're gonna be wrapping all the edges of our binder. So at least one and a half. Um, so, you know, if you have to apply a couple strips of, you only have like maybe half inch score tape, um, you may decide you just want to use glue at that point. Uh, so you're just, yeah. Two inch score tape is amazing. It's really amazing. I love it. It's not so giant that I have to deal with these big bulky one and a half by eight, or eight and a half by 11 sheets. It's wonderful. I always have this on hand. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do this to, I don't know how many strips we're gonna need just yet. Probably at least eight. I'm gonna start out with eight and then we'll see if we need any more after that. So I've got my eight strips that are two inches wide by 12 inches and the length doesn't, well, you want them to start out at 12 inches, but we may cut some of them down. Some of them we will not. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the bottom and the top of the spine piece. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. I'm going to take one of my strips, remove the backing. And if you didn't have two inch score tape, okay, and maybe you, your smallest was like a half inch and you didn't want to continue laying strips after strip, just put, just put one strip down the center, okay? Put one strip down the center of your of your one strip of half inch score tape if that's the biggest you have down the center of your cardstock strip remove that um remove that backing Then, whether you have full coverage like me, or whether you have just a you know just a smaller strip of score tape going down the center, this step right here is the same. You are going to lift up your binder and just try to center it over your cardstock strip. So if you've only used one piece of score tape going across the center, just make sure you cover that score tape halfway, okay? And this step doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, you know, you just don't want it like this, and you don't want it like this. You wanna try to get it at the center point of this strip, okay? So right about there looks good to me. Sorry. 
Okay. And so if you've only, if you only had a half uh, inch strip of score tape going across the center of your cardstock strip, it should be sticking because of that half inch piece of score tape, okay? Um, so it won't be sticky everywhere. I'm gonna take this and I want to, okay, so at this point, I am going to turn it around just because it's easier for me because I'm right-handed. And I am just going to kind of train my paper to fold, okay? then at this point, if you only had that half inch piece of score tape, you're gonna cover all the rest with glue. Uh, that's what I would do. Glue is my best friend. All right, and it's gonna get a little, oh, you know, oh, yeah, that was dumb. We should have put it in, in here first. That was really, really dumb. Okay, well. We'll do that on the other side. For right now, I'm just gonna try to get this sucker under there and flatten it as best I can. All right. Okay, so I love using glue. Glue is actually my preferred method because it dries. It dries. Uh, score tape is always tacky, so it does and can come up over the years. Um, but I am just gonna continue this current method of using full cover score tape. But yeah, if you're thinking, oh, I'd rather have score tape here um, and not glue, don't let that bother you because glue is actually awesome. <laughs> Um, I definitely would use score tape at least to get it sticking initially and to avoid, um, you know, to avoid the glue not spreading everywhere. So I definitely would use score tape to get it down initially, but just to kind of get the ends to stick to the paper here, glue is just fine. All right, at this point, I want to remove that half inch I want to remove that half inch uh, quarter inch sorry tape backing if I can there we go All right, now for this side, it probably would have been easier if we had done this and then wrapped it around the back. So I might do that this time, okay? All right, let's see if I can get this in semi-evenly before it sticks. There is still some plastic underneath of that, underneath of the three ring strip, so. All right, that's 
pretty good. Okay, and since we did it this way, this is where I can score my paper, which I always prefer doing. So let me protect the tape. Now I can score my paper like this gently. We do not want to, absolutely do not want to put a rip or a tear in that paper. Great. Okay. Let's make sure that is burnished down real well. I'm going to keep mine like this, otherwise it's going to it's going to bend because of the three rings. So I'm going to do it like this when I fold it, okay? And then we can continue with wrapping the rest. I'm going to do the ends first. And I'm going to cut those down so they're exactly the same length as our, um, as our cover. So I need one for this end. And I need one for this end. Exactly mine is, I believe, 11 and 3 eighths minus like a 16th. Okay, so I've cut two strips down down to size, okay, to match the exact length of my cover binder. <clears throat> and I'm just going to lay it halfway over, okay.
don't want the strip sticking past the edges, so. And then, let's see if I can do this. And they don't have to look super neat because they're gonna get covered up. Uh, but I don't want this, this paper sticking past the edges, so I'm gonna cut this smidge off. All right. Okay, and then, oops, 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 oops. Okay, let's go ahead and cover here, here, and here, and here. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. I need another strip. And this one, I'm gonna stay away from my spine edge, okay? So I'm gonna start this strip, you know, maybe, maybe around there. It's not, it doesn't really matter too much, but I definitely wanna stay away from this edge and I wanna stay away from the edge of this cardstock strip, okay? I don't want those like lined up next to each other right here, and I don't want them lined up next to each other where the spine is, okay? So somewhere in the center there, like maybe right about there, okay? And I do want a good inch hanging past the edge of my, the edge of my chipboard. Okay, so that's perfect. This is a perfect length, the 12 inches. All right, so let's remove. Actually, don't remove it yet. <laughs> Get it where you want it. Okay, so line it up as if it was stuck down. It's not stuck down, but line it up as if it was. Um, nope. I'm trying to, sorry, this is only my second time doing this and it's been a few years. Let's just go ahead and stick it down and then I'll show you what. Okay, how, how we're gonna get the corner perfectly mitered. Second thought, I am going to stay away from this so I don't have to tuck it underneath. So I'm going to go right about I'm going to go right about there, okay? So I don't have to tuck the other half of this strip underneath of that ring. So I'm going to overlap this by about by about one inch exactly okay so I'm not lining it up under this but I'm also staying away from the edge of it so about one inch overlap of this strip okay sticking that down and then to get perfectly mitered corners I'm just going to lay my my corner mitering tool. Hopefully I'm staying in frame here. this to fold. Again, I need to move this because I'm right-handed. take that little bit of cardstock and tuck it in there and then I will fold this one over.
Okay, we'll do the same over here. And there's no, there are no rings over here, so you don't have to worry about that. How am I going to do this right handed? All right. All right, so I'm actually going to not train this bottom to fold. I'm going to do the, this piece first. I'm going to adhere that piece down first. And then I can much more easily tuck in this little piece right here, but I'm sorry, I do need to move this all the way around in the opposite direction. Okay, where are we, right here. All right, and that way I can tuck in this little piece just like, and they are, the corners are slightly rounded on this binder. you can see that. So I've just tucked it in against the chipboard and now I'm going to train this piece to get folded over. two sections here to do. <laughs> okay, so we'll start over here. So what we want to do very quickly is, and very carefully, is we want to just use our bone folder to score against the two pieces, of, the two edges of chipboard that meet together here, and against these two edges of chipboard that meet together. We want to score the actual cardstock right at the bottom ends 
You don't want to puncture that cardstock, so just be gentle. You just kind of have to find the right amount of pressure. wonderful 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 so all right so for the inside piece we want to go ahead and get a piece of uh, a piece of our cardstock okay that we can slide under here until it meets those two screws okay and actually this is the perfect width so this piece happens to be seven and three quarters and mine is a four inch binder so your measurements might look different than mine just get a piece of cardstock that butts right up against those screws underneath of our uh, three ring strip and then yeah it should overlap about that much that's perfect mine is overlapping into this piece by about two inches ish okay and for the length, I don't want it to go past, obviously, our binder. So I will cut it to about 11 and one quarter. Now this piece, it's important to apply, to apply full coverage score tape because we want to avoid a situation where our glue does not spread everywhere. So we're gonna do full coverage score tape. this strip on so I can grab it easier. So I want to get it up against the screws before it sticks down. Let's see if we can do this. Here again, we want to very, very, very carefully score the edges, score our cardstock against the edges of the chipboard that's underneath. wrapped our binder so everything else we do is going to be decorative paper okay all right everything else is going to be decorative paper I think it looks absolutely wonderful all right so I'm gonna clear 
clean up my workstation and then we will get to decorate our, decorating our cover. And we are just about done. I forgot kind of an important part. We want to also take another piece of our cardstock that also measures the same length, length as this piece did. So mine was 11 and a quarter. And we're gonna slide it under this end until it meets the, the, um, the two nails, screws, whatever. <laughs> whatever they are, and to about right here. You know, as long as it clears the rings. So we need to do that, and then our binder is done and we can decorate. cut mine to four inches wide so I can just do two strips of this and be done. cover for no particular reason. Uh, so this is the last page in our album and I want, I kind of want these two to complement one another. So I am taking another sheet of this adorable panda paper and this is going to be my base and it's not the same size um, which is great because I don't want it to be completely matchy matchy. So I've, um, if I didn't mention it earlier in that layout, this is a tile pattern I purchased from Etsy. So she gives you the tile so you can make the pattern as big or as small as you want. So I took that tile pattern and opened up a Photoshop, a brand new Photoshop document that measures 12 inches by 12 inches or 3,600 pixels by 3,600 pixels. I inserted this tile and I sized it to three inches by three inches and I just put three across, three across, three across, three, ac three by three. I, just, I it obviously used nine of them because they were sized three by three inches so I had to place nine of them on my 12 by 12 document and then I just printed it out, okay? All right, so, okay, so I have cut this down so that it um, has a nice border on three sides. And I just cut it to right about the edge of our, our ring, our three ring strip. So it doesn't go under it, um, but it just kind of, there's a, like a little border. You can still see a little bit of what of the cream base cardstock. So cut this down to size. I've got a little bit border all the way around. And I am gonna glue that on. stock that you need to cut out is 11 and a half by four inches. Okay, so by the time you score with the long end at the top at one half from both ends, and then with the short end at the top at one half, the final measurement of the actual pocket will be 10 and a half by three and a half. Okay, so miter your corners as always. Fold and burnish on those score lines. And I'm 
going to put my pocket right, right here. So it's got a border on the top and the bottom and on the left. And yes, that's, that's kind of how I, I did it like that deliberately. Um, I don't have any cardstock bigger than 12 inches. So for the pocket to go all the way from the top to the bottom, I would need a piece of paper that was like 12 and a quarter. So I like this look. So that's what I did. And then the mat for the pocket is uh, three and three eighths by 10 and three eighths. And then I've got a decorative piece of paper that's gonna mat that. So I, I kind of want that black border, kind of the same thing we did here. photo mats and I've just chosen decorative paper decorative paper to mat those and I have another four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo mat and this is four and three quarters by six and a quarter. So then you're, you're uh, put it in your scoreboard with the ha uh, shorter end at the top and you'll score it half an inch. Fold and burnish. And we'll miter those, we'll miter the ends of that flap. And then you're just going to adhere them together so that you have a little booklet, okay? one quarter by four and one quarter photo mat and a four and one quarter by four and three quarters so again you'll score any single so that's not true wait no <laughs> the longer end in your scoreboard and you'll score it one half inch here. I just want to make sure that they do not extend past the rings. So probably around there. So then we will do the front inside cover. And the front inside cover, the first page you see is this one. So I'm going to attempt to, you know, have it match somewhat. Uh, have it match somewhat this layout, okay? All right, so for the front inside cover, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, so I have a main piece. That's gonna get glued down and it complements, I would say, it, you know, it complements this piece. 
or this the first page in the album okay so I have cut this down to size so I've just chosen something that complements the first page to use for just to layer and I didn't cut it down yet so let me cut it to the same um, dimension as this piece And I do want <clears throat> a little border, so I am going to glue it onto a strip just like that. This decorative piece, by the way, was about nine inches. So, you know, you could really make it any width you wanted. I just, I just wanted to kind of layer and I put those two pieces together, this one and this one, and I like the way it looked. And um, in an effort to add some more layers, I chose this one to go here. But before I glue anything else on, um, let's lay out our other pieces. So this is just going to be a layout of photo mats. Okay, so I have two um, <clears throat> photo mats that measure five and one eighths of an inch by three and five eighths of an inch. So that's those two, which means um, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Three and three quarters by five and one quarter. Three and three quarters, five and one quarter. The actual mats measure three and five eighths of an inch by five and one eighths of an inch. So that means once those two are on, you can fit a three and a half by five inch photo. Okay. And then I have a four and a quarter by four and a quarter photo mat four and one eighths of an inch by four and one eighths of an inch actual mat for that photo mat. <laughs> and that will accommodate a four by four picture. And then we have a two and a quarter by three and a quarter, two of those, two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And these are two and one eighths by three and one eighths. And they will accommodate two by three wallet photos. So, I think what I was going to do <clears throat> something to that effect. I kind of want most of them to be symmetrical with the rest of the page. But I'm just gonna lay them out lay them out until I think they look good. And 
I have Panda to go here. And oh, here we go. <clears throat> I don't know if I like that brown flower. I don't think I do. So maybe. like that. Okay, so that's my page. So <clears throat> um, just cut your Cut your cardstock and then your actual mats and then just arrange everything how you want figure out what kind of decoration you want here if you want some word art prepare that and then just situate it however you want it so this is how mine is going to look so i am going to get this one <clears throat> adhered down first to decide for yourself whether or not you want to cover the spine. <sighs> I don't know if I want to cover the spine. You know, I might decide. Ooh, I think I'm going to take the pattern paper that is the base for back here and finish it out. Well, you know, it's funny. It didn't go all the way under yeah, I decided not to go all the way under my, um, that's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. 
I'm going to take a piece and cut it to about Yeah, about one and one and a quarter. Okay. And I even though I didn't slide this bay, oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Even though I never slid this base under the three rings, it just kind of stops right there. I am still going to take a piece and slide it under the left the left side so it actually looks like one continuous page. I like that. Although I think those pandas are pretty that's okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> I do have this piece here. If that would be yep, I like that even better. Okay. All right, so this piece, all right, so it's not this panda right here directly next to the other of its kind. This needs to get cut more. to decide for yourself if you want to mat your spine. Uh, I'm undecided. I guess you'll know when you see the walkthrough, or you probably already know. <laughs> you would have watched my walkthrough video. Um, I just have to decide. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and put all of my pages into my binder. to the outside cover. All right, so for the front cover, I am using Mitwick Collection's Panda Girl, and I have chosen this piece for the front and the back, so it's the floral piece with the white background. And I have cut mine to 11 and 1 quarter by 11 and 3 quarters. And I've done two of those because this is going to be the front and the back, okay? And then I've select a striped piece, which is also 11 and 1 quarter by about, by about 11 and a quarter. And I'm going to use that to wrap the spine and it's going to overlap the front cover by about two and a half inches and it's going to overlap the back cover by about two and a half inches inches so um, whatever papers you are using for your covers just cut those out I've inked all my edges
apply uh, full coverage score tape. So I'm going to do this very carefully, certainly. Um, so I am going to see if I can just get it in place, wrap it around. I'm just trying to get the best fit that I can by hand and then I'm going to put little creases in the spine in the wrap. So I'm lining it up on the front and the back so it is completely in line with the edge of this paper here and here. And at the same time, getting it aligned with the back piece. Okay, and then I'm creasing it like so. Then what I will do is I will remove maybe just a little piece there. So it's stuck down. Yeah, that's a pretty darn good fit, okay. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to remove a little piece. Okay, so now I am off. So this one needs to come. to do this. I just messed that up. No easy way to do this. So, I don't I don't wrap like this very often ever, really. Let's just hope that it works out when it gets to the back. Okay. So then I take off one piece at a time and before I wrap it around the corners, I want to open my 
book slightly. I don't want it completely flat and I don't want it completely shut when I wrap around the corners here. Let me take off one more piece. So I'm just going to have it open, not completely straight and not completely 90 degree angle. So maybe like that. And then I'm just going to wrap this around evenly. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah, and I lined it up quite well. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> All right, I'm removing more backing. I need to remove two more to get it around the other corner. Same thing here. So I don't want this as a 90 degree angle, but I don't want it completely straight either. Oh, my pieces are falling out of my cover. So maybe right about there. There's a lot of glitter from my flowers. That's where the glitter is coming from. <laughs> I guess, I guess there's nothing I can really do to avoid that. Okay. So let's get this nice and burnished. above my paper here and it's above my paper here which means here it's closer to the edge of the book and here it's too far away it doesn't line up with this piece but I can't do anything about it now it's not that off that I'm gonna let it bother me even though it's <laughs> it's going to somebody else but So for my front cover from the Knitwit Collections, Panda Girl, I designed this within, um, I designed it uh, within Silhouette. So I just put things together the way that I like them. So I took a circle and I added some elements to it um, and you know flattened everything and printed it out like that. I have a circle here that's going to cover up the edges of these three graphics. And then I have this one that I think I'm going to bump up. And I have a big bear who will sit in the foreground. She will also be bumped up and these guys will be in the background. So like that. And maybe this stuff will be farther down here. And this bear will be over here somewhere, probably bumped up. And then this is gonna be here. And I might do some, I'll probably do some flowers over here, but that is my front cover. So this piece here measures eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. Okay, so eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And then I simply took a 
seven and a half inch circle and I cut it out of the very center. So I centered an eight and three quarter and an eight and three quarter square with a seven and a half circle. Center those two pieces together and um, just cropped that circle right out of this piece. So I'm left with this. And then I've got, um, this is I believe a seven and a half. So just a circle slightly smaller than this one. Um, it can be the exact same size as this one, but then you need a little border circle inside so it'll kind of cover up the edge of this one. Okay, and my panda, my main element here is about five and three quarters. She's probably gonna sit right about there. So I will start by gluing. these two pieces together. Oh, and I inked everything. I forgot to mention that. I, For the front cover, I wanted everything to be inked. So that's what I did. All right. So these, yeah, so the outer dimension of this circle and the inner and the dimension of this inner circle here, they're exactly identical. I probably should have made this one a little bit bigger so it was hidden behind this piece, but that's okay. I did not do that. So I think I want that one to go there. I'm going to bump this one up. Just, I've just picked out from my collection a bunch of different flowers and I'm just 
I just place them where I want them and I'm going to glue them down. is the cover <laughs> with glitter everywhere of our album. So I will probably do some kind of a, a signature sticker here or something, you know, with my name or my company name, but um, there we have it. So um, let me know what you think. I hope you guys really enjoyed follow, following along with this tutorial. Um, I'm sure, I know it was probably hard to do exactly what I did because I didn't use one paper collection. So you had the freedom to do what you wanted for just about every layout. But I hope, um, yeah, I hope you got lots of inspiration. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and thank you so much for joining me throughout the series. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, so until next time.